According to an adulting IQ survey published in 2023, 63% of Gen Zers and millennials feel unprepared for adulthood and are burned out by it. In their 20s and 30s, inflation and addiction to technology is consuming both money and time resources at a much faster rate than in previous decades. Two out of every three in these generations feel like the crucial skills, confidence, and direction needed to navigate this fast-changing world was missing in both education and family life. No one argues that building a life is complicated. And the science has shown that our entitlement thoughts on Gen Z and millennials' intellectual rights may be in need of an overhaul. According to a study published in the National Library of Medicine, an important part of the brain, called the prefrontal cortex, is responsible for our ability to learn executive functions, like decision-making, impulse control, and many different cognitive functions, such as memory, attention, and planning. The prefrontal is one of the last parts to mature, in the mid to late 20s, with many biologists believing that maturity is based on an individual's biological markers, and for some, occurring as late as the 30s and 40s. This is years past the legal age of 18, when many of us have taken our newfound freedom as an opportunity to fully rebel against those in authority intent on making our own way. One may say that life is like a game, and the game is rigged. Once this part of the brain is fully developed, how do we begin to connect the dots of more than 25 years of data? And who's really in charge? The prefrontal cortex? Or do we have free will to intentionally become self-made? Free will is a complex and controversial topic, debated by philosophers, scientists, and religious thinkers for centuries. If free will is defined as the ability to act at one's own discretion, to make one's own choices, and therefore determine one's own fate, could the physical condition of the prefrontal cortex functioning as a control center be the determining factor for the level of our ability to make psychological progress in quality choices? If so, would that mean that a healthy brain, or what we are, is the precursor for determining how well we master the life building process for who we are? And before answering this, consider what the medical community has taught us so far about how physical brain disorders like ADHD, for example, can change a person's psychological systems of thought due to its neurological effects on the brain. They've also taught us how the same is true in reverse. Psychological stress can result in physiological changes to the brain and these generations are not alone. Another study revealed the emergence of the wine mom and the beer dad in Gen X. Heavily influenced by social media, the modern portion of this generation in their 40s and 50s are struggling to balance the idea of having it all while losing themselves. The generic beginning of life plans like the American dream mapping a generic idea of success has led to an identity crisis of massive scale. In the quest for an escape, binge drinking, retitled as booze bonding, is promoted as a fun outlet to run to, a way to release the built-up anxiety of demanding careers, social responsibilities, and personal relationships that lack the luster of newfound love. After building these generic lives from the outside in, this generation has become whatever society needed during their youth. With a certain level of social and economic stability, these mid-level generations struggle with what it means to now build from the inside out. Stability was never meant for complacency. It was always meant to be a safety net to explore individual and collective growth. A quote often accredited to Benjamin Franklin stated that many people die intellectually at 25, but aren't buried until they're 75. According to a Statista report, on average, the time American adults spend reading was just 15 minutes a day in 2022. Every generation is struggling to find the balance between intellectual growth and peaceful living. The question arises, is our youth entitled to a system that better educates them with a self-awareness mindset of the correlation between their physiology and psychology? We are trained with tools to understand a degree of the outside world, like English to communicate with others, math to deal with simple and complex accounting, and science to understand the basics of our ecosystem, matter, energy, and neurons. But where is that step-laddered education, over 12 plus years, connecting human physiology with human psychology? According to Harvard University Center on the Developing Child, no one is born with executive functioning skills. Our genes provide the physical blueprint for how we learn, and because they're developed through experiences and practice, nearly everyone, to some degree and on differing levels, can learn these skills. If there was one lesson to be learned by the age of 25, 
Could it be a deep understanding that to a great degree, we not only have the ability to change ourselves, but also the responsibility of becoming a lifetime parent to ourselves? Self-parenting is a way to honor yourself throughout the seasons of adulthood by building a healthy relationship within to feel safe, to feel heard, and to feel loved while also developing a life student mindset to progress in both competence and capabilities when building psychological systems of thought. Although no one has all the right answers to life's most meaningful questions, there are at least three important lessons that can be initiated by choice at the start of legal adulthood. Number one is an introduction to the internal hierarchy of one's self, the body, the soul, and the spirit. The prefrontal cortex is only one part of the brain, and the brain is only one part of the massive systems that make up the human body. Our physiology plays a completely different role than the psychological systems of information that determines how we filter data as we create systematic ways of thinking. And both physiology and psychology play different roles in comparison to spirituality with intuition, self-awareness, and the ability to see an even bigger picture in the human spirit. Number two is an introduction to an external perspective of the way organized societies are socially engineered. Although individual autonomy and community well-being are interdependent on each other, we must understand the pre-designed hierarchies engineered for order and progress and the roles we play as individuals in these systems of influence, both consciously and unconsciously. Number three is an introduction to the elements of the freedom we have to develop and change ourselves, that prefrontal cortex that, when healthy and fully developed, enables us to plan, organize, and make good decisions can also be the gateway for becoming the master of what we can control to build, renovate, and sometimes rebuild a life we deem to be worth living. And one step at a time, a balanced me becomes a stronger community of we. Subscribe to explore the commonalities of our humanity with us, one topic at a time, from the inside out. Welcome to Circles of You.